All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Jack Rasmussen, who is a senior at USC and studying business administration, cinematic arts, and sports media industries. He also just published his first book, which is on pre-order right now. And Jack, what's the title of the book? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me, Timothy. The title of the book is Fine Dining, The Secrets Behind the Restaurant Industry. So I interviewed a bunch of top chefs in our in our country and i'm really excited for all of you to hear it or list uh to read it yeah awesome there we go and of course we are excited to have you on the show and we like to jump right in so if you could start with telling us a little bit more about yourself and what you like to do for fun that'd be great yeah of course so i'm from born and raised in northern california from a small town called los gatos and here I grew up playing sports, love sports, and that kind of inspired me. I always wanted to get into journalism. Um, I've always been kind of a creative person. So from my high school here, I went to Archbishop Mitty, a private Catholic school. I wanted to go to a big football school. So I ended up at USC and wanted to get sort of um, the main basic things so I could be a businessman. So I, I wanted to take business administration classes, but I also wanted to minor in things that I was really interested in. So that's why I'm minoring in cinematic arts and sports media industries right now. For fun, I love traveling. So this year I've been to Las Vegas actually three times. Um, I've been to Mexico once um, and I love, I love food. So that's kind of what inspired my book. Um, this year, I've interviewed several chefs and visited a lot of restaurants that uh, I love and just wrote about it. So I started that in the summer, just finished um, at the end of the year, about a month ago, and it's going to be published in the spring. So I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah, that's a little bit about me. <laughs> that's awesome, man. So you just wrote this book because you love food. Yes. Yeah. Also, a big part of it was is I, I'm really into entrepreneurship and I'm involved right now. I'm involved in four startups and basically my my study of entrepreneurship, because my my emphasis in my degree is entrepreneurship and innovation. So I take a lot of classes about entrepreneurship. So my book kind of marries food, my love of food and uh, entrepreneurship together. So I basically talk about how to start a restaurant post pandemic. Uh, what do you need? What are the different aspects? So it's more like the business side of things. So I, I, I really wanted to explore that entrepreneurship, um, that entrepreneurship ideas, all those ideas that I've been, been studying too. There we go. Well, awesome, man. Tell us a little bit more about your motivation. What gets you up and keeps you going every day? Yeah. I think for me, it's impacting as many people as I possibly can, um, how many people I can make happy. And, and a lot of that is also my faith. I was actually rebaptized this year in Santa Monica. My uh, minister dunked me in Santa Monica in February. So I was rebaptized as a Christian. And this kind of revitalizing my faith has really helped my motivation because I live every day sort of trying to just trying to be there for other people and serve other people. And that, that has really helped me kind of fulfill my mission of impacting the most people as possible um, within my day. And I, I kind of live like each day is my last. I know a lot of people say they live like that, but I actually really try to live like that where I get up and I think, okay, if I die tomorrow, like, I want to be proud of this day. So what, you know, just do as much as I possibly can, really. Yeah, there we go. I love that. So impacting as many people as you can, which comes in the form of serving them, loving them. And that is motivated by your faith, which you revitalized recently. Yes, sir. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. There we go. Well, let's jump into your dreams and goals, man. What are some of the goals, visions, dreams that you have for your life, your career as a young dude about to enter uh, the real world? 
Yeah, that is a loaded question because I I'm involved in a lot of things in college, but my my dream is to go into the entertainment industry and I I would love to work with creative people in any capacity. So whether it is broadcast journalism where maybe I'm working for ESPN either on the production team or or in front of the camera, that's something I would love to do or getting into like acting or producing movies would be something I would love to do. Um, I actually recently applied to go to Taiwan for a year after my graduation. And in Taiwan, they actually have a huge entertainment industry there. So hopefully I could build my portfolio, whatever that looks like, whether it's in movies or in broadcast or media and try to build it there because I'll, I'll be a lot more unique there than, than I am in LA. And then maybe come back to LA if I have the opportunity to go to Taiwan, come back to LA, show off my portfolio. So maybe I can get a job, you know, at a huge media company like ESPN or uh, start working more in the movie industry. But yeah, th that, those are my dreams. Uh, big dreams. Dude, I, uh, I know two voice actors and another fairly young guy who wants to get into, um, like writing and developing mm -hmm. movies or like having creative control over films. Yes. So if you want me to make those connections, I'm pretty sure most of them would be cool with meeting you. So I would, I would really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, dude, of course. I'm glad you came on the podcast because that's what this podcast is for to do this, that. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome, man. So going to Taiwan, is that like, right after you graduate thing or what are you looking at for that so that is that's through fulbright uh which is a scholarship program that sends students overseas sort of in an exchange program where i would live with a family so that would start right around my birthday in august 2022 so i'd have the summer after my graduation and then i'd be in taiwan for a year so i'd be there until august 2023 so it'd be, it'd be a long time away from California where I've been my whole life. So we'll see what happens. And the Fulbright's like, you can't come back into the country for a whole year, right? Exactly. Exactly. So it'll be a wild experience if I get that. Fingers crossed I get it. I'm really hoping. Yeah, man. I'm sure you will. And I'm sure you'll build that portfolio. That is awesome. Are there any other goals or dreams that you want to chat about before we move on? Um, I would just say that I, I am really interested in, in startups and my family has experienced a lot of mental health issues, especially during COVID and something that I, a dream in my life that I want to hopefully achieve is one day work on some initiative that really, I, I don't think there, there can ever be something that totally solves the mental health crisis that we're going through, but just something that can alleviate it in some way because I've seen what it's done to my family. And I just think there needs to be something out there that really helps people who are, you know, going through these, these breakthroughs. Um, uh, so yeah, that would be something I'd love to work on. I'm not really sure what it would look like, but something in that realm. How do you think you could merge your passion for mental health with your desire to be in the film industry and build mm. out your movies mm. and stuff? That is, that is such a good question. I think, I mean, documentaries are a great way to share knowledge and share information. So maybe getting into the documentary kind of genre or making films that spotlight characters who are relatable to people who are going through mental health crises, like, um, you know, maybe someone who is schizophrenic, but who, who gets through it throughout their life. They deal with a lot of things, but at the end of their life, they have a great life and they're successful. Kind of show that as an example of, okay, even if you do have, you know, mental health illness, if you have one, there's still potential for you. There's still a way to be successful and be happy. So maybe just presenting characters, relatable characters in a way that um, can be beneficial 
to families that are going through these things because it, it'll be a good example and maybe could also provide some clarity in a way. So maybe, yeah, maybe just implementing that into the storyline um, in, a, in a healthy way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. I love that. Um, another connection, actually. We interviewed a social impact documentary filmmaker. Wow. As one of the like first episodes on the podcast. <laughs> so I would love to meet. I would love to meet that person. <laughs> yeah, man. It's crazy. He used to be a crackhead. Wow. Like he was a homeless crackhead traveling the country with his daughter, turned his life around and made a social impact documentary helping homeless people actually so wow cool stuff that was a fascinating interview i was like dude your life has been wild like <laughs> more power to you that's crazy wow. so yeah I, i'll connect you guys too um because he was always looking for help and he's actually doing a startup to like uh, i don't know if it's a startup as much as kind of an initiative but mm -hmm. the tech companies that are moving into austin they're gonna cause a lot of appreciation and displace a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so homelessness is going to increase because people are kicked out of their homes. And he's like, the same thing happened in California. I've been like following these tech companies and what we should do is hold them accountable to being proactive about the situation and addressing the homelessness before they cause a lot of people to be homeless. And he has a whole mm -hmm. system for that. So it's a great wow. podcast, but yeah, man. Good for him. That's great. Wow. And so you see yourself maybe doing a documentary or two and writing out characters that can incorporate mental health in a healthy way into your films. Yeah, I would love to do that. Yeah. I love it. Awesome, man. Cool. Where are you in the Fulbright process? Like, when will you know? Yeah, so I just... I just applied and at USC set me up with a committee, a school committee, which was awesome. So they helped me out with my application and I just submitted it uh, end of October. So it's been about a month and a half uh, since I submitted it. And then in January, they will let me know if I'm a semifinalist and then I'll do an interview. And then I think I find out in March. So it's a long process. So we'll see what happens. I feel like yeah. the fact that you wrote a book will help you out. <laughs> I don't even know if they'll know, but maybe if I interview and I'll, I'll let them know, maybe that'll, that'll help me. <laughs> yeah. Just throw that in there. Cause anytime you can tell them that you're really passionate about it, I think that's what the whole thing is. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, if there were one or two people that you can meet right now, and this can be a specific person or a type of person, and they would help you take the next step towards your goals and dreams of really working in the film industry, the entertainment industry, who would they be and how would they help you? Okay, I have thought about this a little bit and I think one of my biggest uh, inspirations or just someone who I've always, lo I've loved all his movies, um, but Bradley Cooper, he's an actor and also a director. And I just, I think he did such a good job with A Star is Born. I don't know if you saw that movie, but that was his directorial debut. And he just did such a outstanding job. And I think just his attitude in life, he's very fearless and decided to sing for the first time on his first ever directorial debut, which is crazy. But I think meeting him, I could ask him, about his journey and how he got to where he is and what he did. Did he take acting classes in college? Was he always going down that path? Because a lot of actors go to college, not really, uh, not studying acting, not, you know, not in theater or whatever. And then they kind of get discovered after college. So I would just be curious to see you know, what inspired him, because maybe I'm inspired in the same way through like impacting people through stories and then asking him what steps would be the best way to go, um, because I just love um, having a positive impact on people and expressing myself. Uh, so I think, yeah, I think he could really help me 
kind of navigate, you know, what I should really be doing and not wasting time in places that will not help me. So I, I would, yeah, I would love to meet Bradley Cooper. I feel that. I feel that. Anybody else or is Bradley Cooper's like, that's it, man. That's the golden ticket. I think I'd, I'd, I've always wanted to meet Oprah Winfrey. I think she's, she's probably like uh, the best interviewer of all time. And I, second, I've interviewed second best. Second best to you, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, I just love how she she really doesn't care. Like, she's so authentic and genuine, and that's why her interviews are so well done. Is that she's not afraid to ask anything, and uh, I think the empire she's built, obviously being the wealthiest black woman ever, it. It's just, it, yeah, she, she's done everything you could possibly do. Um, so, yeah, uh, meeting her would be, would be really insane. Um, and just, yeah, just trying to, I think just life lessons from her would be great. Um, yeah, I would love to meet her. How about you? <laughs> One or two people I can meet right now that would really help me take the next step towards my dreams and goals. Well, I think it, there'd be two types of people. I, I don't really have any specific people. I think somebody who's kind of a couple steps ahead of me in the coaching space, the one-on-one -on -one coaching space, and telling me kind of how to get clients, which I actually know the guy. His name is Alan Lazarus. He uh, came on my podcast. He hosts the Next Level You podcast. So it was great to hear him. And he's the one who told me, like, keep stick with it. You can do it. You read the compound effect. That is like the holy grail to success. Like right, right. stick with the compound effect. Um, but the more I can like surround myself with people like him, because I'm trying to build a one-on-one -on -one coaching business, not trying, I am building a one-on-one -on -one coaching business. And that's mm -hmm. how I'm going to, um, that's going to be like my main source of income is going to replace my W2 because I'm passionate about helping people really get to the point where they are, not being beaten by their own mind and right. so wow. if you're like just stuck in your daily life and you're not pursuing your passions i'm gonna a help you get clarity on what your purpose is what your passions are what your ideal day looks like what your genius zone is and then we're gonna set 90 day goals to start moving in that direction i'm gonna help you get there so that's what i like to do i love that that's really cool <laughs> I'd say the second is um, I was actually challenged to write a book on this podcast by some people because my end goal in life is alleviating poverty around the world. Mm. And I've like thought a lot about it, have plans for it. Obviously my plans have like flaws, but that's why I need to write the book so people can enter discourse with me and we can refine the plans and address the flaws. Um, right. so for that book, I'm also going to be interviewing people who have thought their whole life about any poverty and their thoughts on the situation and what needs to happen. And then I'll have my thoughts in the book as well. And I'm, I'm going to publish that May 4th. So I've now recommitted to it. Second time I've committed to May 4th on the podcast, which is my birthday. So now I really have to do it. Uh, wow. You got to do that. Gotta... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a, a big issue. I don't know how we're going to solve it, but I, yeah, that's something I want to help out into. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. So um, I'd say those two types of people, people who have thought a lot about ending poverty have spent their whole life trying to do it and have kind of like had the experience in the trenches that I haven't. And then other people who have done one-on-one -on -one coaching successfully and mm -hmm. kind of leads from the podcast because that's what's where I'm going to get a lot of my leads. People who listen to the podcast who want to be coached to live their dream. Yeah. Nice. Man, put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I flipped it. I flipped it. I became the interviewer. <laughs> awesome. Well, what's the most important one or two things that everyday people can do to help you get your start in the film and entertainment space, as well as working on any initiatives that help alleviate mental health? I, I think... I think taking classes maybe and I I have yet to do this and I know I've been in LA 
but the past two semesters I've taken 21 units <laughs> all three so I've been just absolutely booked um but I, I think taking I think taking acting classes from professionals and maybe getting myself set up with it with an actual agent because I think they would have better guidance for me but I, I've worked with some actors like in certain capacities but I, I think kind of being more serious about it and um, setting myself up with an agent and trying to do more, you know, things and trying to make myself more visible to people. Uh, Cause at the end of the day, it's just exposure that will ultimately, you know, get you to the next level, kind of like how you do in the podcast and, and compounding. So just building that portfolio um, in the quickest, most efficient way possible. And then I, next semester, I'm really excited. I'm taking a few um, sports media classes that I think will be really beneficial to me with one of my favorite professors ever at USC, uh, Jeffrey Fellinser, who's worked for the LA Times for a long time. And he's been a great mentor to me. So I'm taking the athlete sports media and popular culture. And then I'm also taking sports commentary. So I think those classes will be really fun for me to, you know, see if maybe broadcasting is the right thing for me or maybe you know if I should go into the movie industry but kind of I think next semester I'll, I'll get a lot more clarity and maybe take a few more steps in that direction of maybe doing some acting classes or maybe um, maybe doing more radio stuff uh, like you so we'll see gotcha I love that have you ever thought about doing like skits on YouTube and having that be like a part of your portfolio because it's still kind of like a film that you can produce and showcase your acting skills uh, I, I have thought about that I've thought about YouTube and to be honest I just haven't I haven't put any time into it but I feel like that's a really smart idea yeah I feel that man I also think like you could do skits I mean they could be funny skits they could be dramatic skits or even skits that address the mental health issues and the mental health crisis and you can start working on that like one of those go viral not only are you changing lives but you're getting your name out there and all your dreams are kind of intertwined just a thought yeah, i like that i really like that yeah maybe i should <laughs> yeah now you have to do it <laughs> <laughs> i'll do it this break i'll make at least one youtube video at least one all right there we go i love it Cool, man. Well, let's jump into our thriving three now. Our first question is, what's your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. My favorite podcast is Mindset Mentor by uh, Rob Dial. You're kidding me. Dude, I love that podcast. That it's, it's amazing. <laughs> I, and I get text messages from him every day. I, <laughs> and I, he's like, he's literally the top of my messages app. I made, I made him the top where you, you know how you can put someone mm -hmm. as like so he rob dials my top person and uh yeah i i just love what he stands for and i love everything he does i think he has great advice and i try to listen at least at least weekly to his his podcasts but that it's really helped me stay on track and and keep a clear mindset and kind of uh, get rid of the distractions in my life yeah yeah, yeah, absolutely. Did you listen to his uh, Seven Day of Darkness interview that was recently put on his podcast? I don't think I did. I need to, though. Oh, dude, it was so good. So I've never I've never done any like uh, hallucinogenic drugs or anything like that. Not a big mm -hmm. fan of putting anything in my body, really, that doesn't need to be there. Right. But um something that has always made me curious was that people who take those hallucinogenic drugs have like really spiritual experiences. Right. And I talked to a fellow Christian who, before he was Christian, he took some drugs and he was like, it was honestly a very spiritual experience. And like a lot of people say interactions with the Holy spirit kind of produce similar results as like you on hallucinogenic drugs. And what he said happened was 
he was in seven days of darkness, so solitude, no light. And he entered into like an endogenous DMT trigger in his head, which kind of put him in that hallucinogenic trip state without having to intake anything, which was really interesting to me because I thought you could only do it by taking drugs. But I was like, oh, that can happen naturally. And he said he went through a bunch of cool stuff. So maybe not seven days of darkness to produce (laughs) a trip state, but solitude is always a good thing to get to know yourself better. And that's what he talks about and talks about some of the stuff that he learned from it. And it's not, it's not Rob. It's a uh, Rob's friend who did it. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I see. I'm never by myself is the problem. So I, <laughs> I feel like if I have a week of solitude, I'll, I'll learn a lot about myself. Yeah, man. That's what, that's what he said too. He said, and for the first like three days, he was just trying to fix his life. And then the next three days he entered into the, kind of trip state if you will and dude he's just he said it was like an amazing experience like he was just bawling uncontrollably and felt a lot of emotion and all this stuff that we usually suppress right because we have to function in society but anyway mindset mentor that's a great podcast (laughs) awesome well what's one way you like to take care of yourself For me, the biggest thing I do to take care of myself is working out. So every day I usually bike with my dad. Um, We live by trails here in Los Gatos. So we bike um, about a few miles and and that just really kind of clears my mind. And then I usually try to go to the gym at least three to four times a week. um, And that really helps. And music always helps. I always have my AirPods in when I'm biking or when I'm working out. And yeah, it's just a good escape. I think working out really helps me stay on track. And I, whenever I get stressed, I just put all that energy into working out. And then when I'm done, I feel, I feel like I release that stress. So that's, that's what I do. Yeah, man. I love it. And what is one, we've already kind of talked about this a little bit though. Um, Mm -hmm the action step that you can take right now to get to your highest priority dream? I think trying to connect with uh, an agent would be the best way. And I think meeting people in general in the movie industry, uh, which is very hard. I've met a few people, but I think networking right now during my break and trying to find uh, the best agent or someone who could kind of point me in the right direction so I could sort of plan for the next year because next year will be really important for me um, as I graduate and do other things. So I think just trying to find the right people and make those steps now um, could be really helpful for me. Mm, Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, Connecting with an agent and networking. Tell you what, you have to make a skit before your Christmas break is up. And I need to do that too. Yeah. (laughs) There we go. There we go. But if somebody put a gun to your head and said, by the end of Christmas break, you have to meet Bradley Cooper or that's it. How would you, how would you go about meeting Bradley Cooper? I would look up, he has an agent. So I would look up his agent's phone number. And I'd call, I just straight up call them and be like, Hey, I have to meet Bradley Cooper or I'm going to (laughs) die. I have a gun to my head right now. So like, I need to, I need to chat with him really quickly. (laughs) I love it. I love it. So (laughs) without the proverbial gun to your head, what would you say to his agent? I would say, I would probably just be, be honest. And I would say, uh, Bradley's been an inspiration to me for a while and I'm a student at USC. I'm interested in getting into the film industry and I would love to chat with him um, to see, you know, what, you know, to see if he could help me in any way. And I, yeah, well, I don't know if that would work, but I, I would probably have to send a few things. So maybe if I do a skit, I could maybe email her that email him that and uh see what happens from there 
cool, man. So what are you going to do right after we hop off this podcast in five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe I'll start writing a skit. Writing, I, I've done a few screenplays, um, but maybe I'll write a, a short one and uh, experiment with it a little bit. Maybe, maybe start a YouTube channel. Or call Bradley Cooper's agent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. All right, but I'll hold you to it. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you know. I'll let you know tomorrow how how our meeting went with my meeting with Bradley Cooper went. <laughs> awesome. Sounds good. There we go. Well, I have one last question for you. Requires a bit of pretext. So you know how there are people on the planet who have a fixed mindset. They're not willing to accept help and they're not willing to accept change. Sometimes they live their whole life like that. And unfortunately, sometimes they'll die like that. Other times they make a change in their life to more of a growth mindset, willing to accept help and willing to accept change. In your opinion, what is the catalyst that causes them to make that change? Wow. That is such a good question. I, cause I, I love the book, the book on growth mindset. I read it. Um, wow. That's a, that's a good question. I think the catalyst is not living for other people's judgment. And I think a lot of people do this where they do things thinking about what other people will think of them. And I think that automatically puts you in this mindset of, okay, I can't do things. I can't do what I want because I'm inherently always thinking about how my actions will be perceived by others. And I think getting out of that, getting out of that like tunnel in your head and saying, okay, it doesn't matter what people think about me. I need to do what I love and, and follow my passions and, um, I think that will help you just grow and find yourself more when you actually let go of what people may perceive you as and just be your authentic self and try to do things more intrinsically rather than always thinking about, okay, what is going to be the external reaction to what I do? Because you'll never be happy that way. If you're constantly living for other people's validation, you'll never really find your your true inner peace. So I think, obviously it's harder said than done, but I think living for yourself and being, being like selfish in that way where you're not thinking about the judgment you're gonna get, like just be yourself because life is way too short. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Authenticity is so important. Um, yeah. And what do you think takes an inauthentic person, somebody who is living for other people's judgment to the point where they're like, okay, I'm going to be authentic in my life now. I think it, I think it takes a mentor. It either takes a mentor or it takes a awakening of some sort. Like for me, I think finding, finding God in my life, really opened up my eyes because I was in such a bad spot last year where I was extremely negative. Um, and I was surrounded by people who were negative. And when I met my minister and found God in my life, that kind of opened everything up for me. And then I got rebaptized and then I became a Christian disciple. And then I started surrounding myself with people who were positive and I could see myself reflected in them. So I, I think it takes kind of an awakening of some sorts. Obviously I don't think you need to get baptized like me, but I think surrounding yourself by people who lift you up is one of the biggest things you could do in your life. People who uh, don't tear you down, but you, they just, build you up and you feel like you're growing every day because of them. I think that's so important. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there we go. I love it. Jack, is there anything else you want to chat about before we sign off? Um, no, I, I would just say have a good holiday season. I think uh, don't take it for granted. I'm super happy to be home and see my family because I don't see them very often. So I would just say, Enjoy the holiday season 
and be grateful for your family and the things you have in your life. There we go. I love that. This will post on April 2nd, but I hope you guys enjoyed your holiday season. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed the holidays last year. <laughs> yes. And being grateful is always an important thing. So you can be grateful on April 2nd, just like you can be grateful uh, at Christmas time and Thanksgiving. So there we go. Awesome. Well, Jack, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, Timothy. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. And if you guys are listening to this and you loved what Jack had to say, you support his dreams and goals and you have a way to help him, make sure to reach out to him, connect with him. The ways to do it will be in the show notes. There'll be an email or a website or something, I'm sure. And um, also buy his book and share the secrets of fine dining. Is that what it's called? Yeah, fine dining, the secrets behind the restaurant industry. There we go. Go ahead and share his book, share that message, as well as support him in his acting and producing career. Or if you have a connection at ESPN and can just hook him up, let us know. (laughs) (laughs) Well, there we go. Awesome. Thank you guys for listening. And as we always ask, shoot this podcast to one to three people you know need to hear the message. Send us a five-star review on iTunes and we're out.